You can grow an entire salad's worth of food, including lettuce, peppers, cucumbers, and tomatoes in one pot if you use these three principles I'm about to teach you about. Let's get into it. Growing joy. Plant friends, hi, I'm Maria, your new best plant friend. I am here to help you care for plants successfully and more importantly, grow joy while doing so. And there is nothing more joyful than being able to come out to one container and harvest an entire salad, all of your dinner, for the night, right? In one pot. I have been small space balcony gardening for three or four years now. My smallest balcony was nine square feet. I've now upgraded to a little bit larger of a balcony, but still I try and grow as much food as possible in the smallest amount of space. And I've learned a couple of things that I want to tell you about today. I have been dreaming about this project that we're going to do probably for the last six months after experimenting with different types of micro dwarf varieties of vegetables and fruits and lettuces over the course of years in little containers, but I thought, why not take these tiny little plants and plant them all up together? So first, I want to thank Espoma Organic for partnering with me on this video so we can teach you how to grow all the salad you could ever want and peppers and cucumbers in one pot. So there's three principles that we have to talk about before we get into this planning, and then I'm going to walk you through all of the exact plants that I'm going to use how to plant it up, and how to harvest. Intensive planting, companion planting, and the art of growing microdwarf. So first off, intensive planting is something I've been doing. And if you have a kitchen garden, if you grow your own food, intensive planting is the concept that you're kind of throwing away the spacing on the seed packets that you read about. Like, oh, you have to plant these plants 12 inches apart. Because when you have a kitchen garden that you're constantly harvesting from, you're cutting the plants back every day to almost every day. My husband and I cook 90% of the food that we eat all week. We are constantly constantly harvesting from our lettuce plants and our herbs. That is this concept of if you plant intensively and you continue to harvest, you can kind of ignore the guidelines. So we're kind of throwing the, the spacing guidelines out the window today. That's intensive planting. Companion planting is a concept that you shouldn't mono plant. You shouldn't put one container all full of tomatoes. It's better, and it's been proven over generations and generations of people who have grown their own food, planting plants that like to live together is a very successful way to repel pests and grow together what goes together, right? So if you think about it, a classic companion planting that we're going to be doing today is tomato and basil. Basil actually wards off some of the pests that would attack a tomato plant. So basil ends up being like the little soldiers that stand guard against the tomato plant, right? So we'll talk about that a little bit more. And also the art of growing microdwarfs. So if you have ever been to a farm or a large scale garden, you'll see zucchini and cucumber plants and tomato plants that can get eight feet tall, right? There are sun gold and sweet 100s and early girl, all of the classic tomato varieties that you're going to get in most of your garden centers. You can't grow in small spaces because a sun gold tomato is going to get eight feet tall if you keep letting it grow. So over years, these brilliant little plant scientists have cultivated dwarf varieties of a lot of the plants that we grow outside. I grow hydroponically indoors in the winter, and I've experimented with a bunch of these varieties and seen just how, you know, this cucumber we're going to plant today, it's a vine that will have 40 tiny cucumbers on it. But for my salad, I don't need a huge cucumber. I just need a little cucumber that I can harvest, right? It's so cool. I'm so excited to show you how to plant everything up and what we're going to dive into. So first, let's talk about containers and soil for planting your plants up. With containers, there are very few edible plants that you can grow in a small container. And this approach to growing multiple plants together, you're going to want to get the biggest container that you can fit. This is also a self-watering container. I travel a lot in the summer. So because of that, I want a container that is going to bottom water my plants so that they won't dry out as I leave for the weekend to go on a beach vacation or to go on a weekend getaway or to one of the million weddings that I have to attend this summer. So you're going to want to make sure that you have a nice large planter. This also is a very deep planter because since we're planting a lot of plants together, I want there to be room for the plant's roots to grow down instead of out. So ideally, as we're snugging these plants together, we want to give them room to go down. We're also, you're going to need a trellis. I have this trellis that we're going to talk about in a little bit because you have to utilize your vertical space. So we want our roots to grow down and our plants to grow up and not as much out. That's going to allow us to plant more plants together. And with containers, you need high quality potting mix. You have to buy potting mix from a bag. Do not go out into your lawn, dig up your dirt and put it in your containers. It is 
way too compact, right? So you need lighter, fluffy soil that is going to allow for the roots to grow into the soil and not like get stuck. In a lot of our outdoor soil, there's um, maybe fungus or pests or like critters that you don't want to be digging up and putting in your containers. Also where I live, it's super heavy clay and clay is going to retain too much moisture. Those plants roots are going to rot and then you're not going to be able to get the harvest that you want. So I am going to pop this container up with a Spoma organic potting mix first, and then we're going to do one thing to it before we start planting everything else up. So let's get the potting mix in this container. Okay. So I accidentally ripped this bag when I was opening it or when I was bringing it up here. So we are going to see how many bags of soil this, I think this is going to be about two bags. Time to protect my new manicure. So I'm just going to work the soil in here to make sure as we water it, the water is going to compact the soil. So you want to kind of work it in make sure that it's nice and loose. And because this is a self-watering pot and it essentially bottom waters the soil, I'm gonna add a little bit more soil on top so that it pretty much comes up to the lip of the planter. Next up, I'm going to prep the soil with a Spoma Organic Biotone. I put this in the base of every edible plant or flower that I grow. Basically, it's starter plant food. So it helps, it reduces transplant loss and it helps the roots uptake water faster. It's got mycorrhizae in it. It's got all sorts of really good stuff that you want to hit the root mass with. So I'm actually going to mix biotone into the top layer of the soil. Or if you're planting in ground, you could just dig a hole and sprinkle some of the biotone into the soil so that when we plant the plants in, when it gets watered, it's going to release into the soil and it's going to help those roots establish faster, access more water, grow bigger, and let the plants take off below so they can take off growth above, as below, so above with plants. All right. Let's talk plants. I live in zone 6A, I believe. I have a pretty small gardening season, basically June, July, August, September. So I don't start from seed outdoors. So I'm planting transplants in here. And then I'll also, after succession, sow seeds on the outside. I spent some time over the last three weeks going around to a bunch of different nurseries so I could find microdorf varieties. Depending on where you live, you might also have to order microdorf varieties online. So I had to order a couple online because they're not as widely sold as I wish they would be. You're, you're starting to see more and more in the market, but we'll make sure that we put all the names of what we're growing in the caption so you can Google them and find them for yourself. So here is what we are growing. This is one of the most prolific cucumbers I've ever seen, and we're going to plant it in the middle. This is called Kitchen Mini Quick Snack Cucumber. I grew it in my lettuce grow a couple of years ago. It grows on a vine. We're going to trellis it, so it's not going to take up that much space. It is so prolific, and it will grow these mini cucumbers. It's going to be amazing. So I'm just going to pop that here for now. The next variety we're growing is another one that I grew on my lettuce grow. It's called the Kitchen Mini's Red Velvet Tomato. This plant will not get larger than 12 inches tall. It is wild. It gets like this big, this big, and it will have 20 tomatoes at a time, and it will continue growing tomatoes throughout the season. So I haven't decided if I'm going to put one or two of these in there. We're going to space these out and then figure it out. So that is the tomato that we're growing. Next up is the Kitchen Minis snacking pepper. So this is a bell pepper, the snacking peppers that never get bigger than this. This might be the biggest plant. It, I, it might get a little bit bigger than the tomato. Um, but once again, it doesn't really bush out that much. It's going to be like this. So we'll have peppers here, tomatoes here. We're going to have cucumbers growing up. I went to a local nursery and I found this dwarf lettuce. It's called Tom Thumb Dwarf Lettuce. So I'm going to interplant the lettuce in between all of the different larger varieties that we're growing because lettuce can take a little bit of shade and you can kind of, that's the beautiful thing about lettuce. You can kind of just like interplant it. I have these tiny little violas. These are edible flowers. So when you build a salad for yourself, I love taking little edible flowers and adding them into my salad. I just think it's a really cute, fun way to elevate a salad and feel special. So we'll have some violas. Also, because we are growing plants that need to be pollinated, like tomatoes, cucumbers, and peppers, the violas will attract some pollinators. And speaking of violas, we also have 
miniature snapdragons. I found miniature snapdragon plants. They're not going to get much bigger than this. They're so beautiful and they will attract pollinators throughout this planter. And then what am I missing? Ah, yes, my globe basil. This has actually sadly bolted a little bit. I'm going to give this a pretty intense prune back, but globe basil is a smaller, more compact bush-like variety of basil. So when I have my tomatoes, if I want a quick tomato and basil caprese situation, they're smaller leaves. They're more compact. They're not going to overtake the planter and shade everything else out. And they'll be beautiful to throw in salads or eat with the amazing tomatoes that I have. So next step, now that I have all the plants that I'm going to grow, one other plant that I put in every single container that I grow is sweet alyssum. It's a small, low blooming plant. It can kind of creep over the sides of the pots, which is very beautiful, but it attracts predators for a lot of the pests that descend on tomato, like on edible plants. I'm forgetting the, the name of the pest. We'll put it in the show notes, but it attracts predatory wasps that will descend on all of the pests that we don't want our plants suffering from. So I always plan at least one plug of Alyssa in every single container that I have on my garden. And I find that it's a great pest deterrent. It also has an amazing smell and the delicate little white flowers are so beautiful. Next step, I am going to put the trellis in. We'll take these plants out of their pots and do a little bit of spacing and get planting. All right. So this is a planter trellis that I got on Amazon a while ago. It collapses easily, which is nice. I'm going to stick it in here. And then the cool thing about it is depending on how deep I want these stakes to go, I can then snap them in place like that. So, whoops. Wait, why isn't this one going in? Hold on. There we go. So we've got it like that. And then, <laughs> all right. So, so we wiggled this one in. My vision is that we're going to put the cucumber in the middle. So the cucumber is going to grow up and around the trellis. And then everything else, like if the pepper or the tomato needs some staking, which they won't, they could at least lean against the trellis. So now I'm going to take everything out of its pot and we will get to planting. Another tip is do not forget to keep the uh, tags, right? So when you're gardening, it's very easy to kind of forget the name of the variety that you're growing. I grew a micro dwarf variety of a tomato two years ago. That was the most prolific tomato plant I've ever seen. In a plant that was about this big, I must have harvested 200 sweet yellow cherry tomatoes. And I lost the tag. And I have no idea what that variety is called. And so I can't find it. And it's like one of the biggest regrets of my life. So don't be like me. Save your tags. So I've spaced everything out. Everything's looking good to me. This basil is a little bit more established than everything else, so I might prune it back after I plant it in. But now I'm just going to get everything planted in and give everything a good water, and we'll probably top dress with a little bit of compost at the end. So let's get started. I took my gloves off because. I know you're supposed to use garden gloves, but I like feeling the soil under my hands and I just need to feel it, guys. I'm sorry. So don't don't do as I do. Do as I say, I guess. OK, so we planted everything up. This is a self-watering planter, so I will fill it and then it will for the rest of the summer grow the plants from the bottom up. But as the plants are establishing, you have to top water until their roots get low enough to be fed by the bottom watering. So I am going to water these plants in pretty thoroughly because also the soil is dry. So you need to water very thoroughly at the beginning in order for the soil to settle and properly establish and support the roots, right? We also want that biotone to get activated in here. You might notice as I'm watering, the plants might are falling over right now, but that's just because they've been through a lot with this transplant shock. It's also not that sunny out. Give them like a couple of hours and a little bit of sun and they're going to pop right back up. I am not worried about it. So everything is planted up now. We have this nice interplanting of flowers for pollinators, lettuce for the base, peppers, tomatoes. Did I just snap? Oopsies, snapped a tomato leaf off. Basil, snapdragons, more lettuce, viola. The plan is that the cucumbers are going to grow up this trellis. So they're just going to go vertical. 
the lettuce might get a little bit shaded, but lettuce needs less light than everything else. And we put lettuce all over. So even if a little bit gets shaded, we can just keep moving the pot around. And as these plants grow in, we will keep cutting them back. So nothing is really going to get bigger than this. And because of that, we're going to be able to have a whole salad in a freaking pot. It's amazing. Because we set them up for success with Espoma Organic Soil and that biotone, hopefully these plants are going to have their roots established fast. They're going to take off in the sunshine. I can't wait to see how this works. I have truly been like dreaming and thinking about this. I've never seen this done online before. I scoured Google to see if anybody has done something like this before. They haven't. So I'm really excited. Please follow me on Instagram at Growing Joy with Maria to follow the journey of this planter. I will let you know when I make my first harvest. Maybe we'll do a follow up video. Let me know if that interests you. We will leave all of the plant varieties in the show notes. We will leave all of the Espoma products that we've used in the show notes. If I can find the link to this silly trellis, I'll put it in the show notes for you too. I hope this inspires you. If you've tried varieties of micro dwarf plants, please put them in the comments. I'd love to know what you've grown. I am learning more and more about micro dwarf varieties every year. I try and grow one or two new micro dwarf varieties every year to get more and more, you know, used to the style and learn more because I think even as I grow my garden and even as I move and start growing on a larger property, I think I'm always going to be growing these compact plants because you can literally have them in a window box, pick a tomato out of your window or pick, you know, a flower or an herb out of your window. I mean, it, life doesn't get better than that, right? In the summer. So I hope this video was inspiring. Thank you so much to Espoma for helping us, for supporting this video. You guys are the best. And I hope you grow your own salad. And with that, keep growing joy.